Coming up, deadly destruction. We give you an update on the California wildfires. In later Tech Savvy, we show you the app that two UI alums created. I'll tell you more about not one, but two Iowa athletes receiving national recognition. It may be sunny this week, but that won't help these cold temperatures. Stay tuned for weather. All that and more coming up on this Tuesday, November 13th edition of DITV. Don't click away, it all starts now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Becca Scadden alongside Anthony Calgary. Good morning, Becca. The Center for Worker Justice of Eastern Iowa is getting closer to Iowa City. They have moved its office to the southeast side of the city. The CWJ's executive director says, quote, the benefit is not for the center, but it's for the community, end quote. The center was founded in 2012 to help Eastern Iowans gain hi get higher wages, affordable housing, improve workplace conditions, assistance in the immigrant community, as well as action against workplace discrimination. Its new location and office space as well has a play area for kids as well. Thanks to the efforts, the CWJ is opening its arms to the local community. To find out more about the expansion, visit dailyiowan.com. One Community, One Book is an annual course taught in Coralville thanks to the Iowa Medical Classification Center. To tell us more, we have the Daily Iowan's Eliana Novich in the newsroom. Good morning, Eliana. Good morning, Becca. Eliana, what's One Community, One Book and what's so unique about it this year? One Community, One Book is an annual seven-week course that was taught at the Iowa Medical and Classification Center in Coralville this semester as a part of the University of Iowa's College and Prison Program, Liberal Arts Beyond Bars. The class brought together 12 undergraduate students and 13 inmates of the prison to learn alongside each other once a week. Together, the, courses, the class has been reading the One Community, One Book selection, Reading with Patrick, a teacher, a student, and a life-changing friendship by Michelle Coe. Through their readings, the class is focused on the theme, Redesigning the American Dream. And what is the Liberal Arts Beyond Bars program? The Liberal Arts Beyond Bars program is the first college and prison program at a public university in Iowa and is the largest college and prison program serving the most students at a public research flag one ship university in the country. The program is just a year old. It piloted in fall 2017 with a non-credited speaker series in which nine UI professors volunteered to teach introductory courses to 33 students. In the spring, the program continued to offer numerous courses for credit, including a speaker series, a yoga course, and participation in the Oakdale Community Choir. It's continued to grow in participation ever since. And so how does the Liberal Arts Beyond Bars staff hope to grow the program in the future? In the future, the program's director, Kat Litchfield, hopes to be able to offer the path for incarcerated students to earn their bachelor's degree. She is looking at partnering with the Iowa Central Community College, who has developed a online degree program at the North Central Corrections Facility in Rockwell City, Iowa, where incarcerated students can work towards earning their associate's degree online. Litchfield hopes to enroll her students in the online associate degree program and then reverse transfer their credits back to the University of Iowa um, so they can work towards earning their bachelor's degree. To read more on Eliana's work, check out today's edition of The Daily Iowan. Eliana Novich in the newsroom, thank you. Thank you. The University of Iowa and Iowa State researchers are teaming up to develop a long-term flu vaccine that could tackle multiple strains. If successful, the vaccine will be able to protect users for up to a decade. So far, the testing trials have been successful on mice and ferrets, but the future testing phases will be pursued to guarantee safety for humans. The vaccine has been worked on for nearly five years due to influences various strains. Its attack plan is to be inhaled by the main side, by the main sites of infection, the lungs and nasal passages. It also includes multiple in influenza virus strains as well as a hunter killer T cells. To prepare more for this year's flu season and to get more details, read Christopher Burroughs' story in the Daily Iowan. Before we get to our local weather, we bring you an update on the deadly wildfires making their way across California. Officials now say that at least 42 people have died in what's being called the Camp Fire, making it the deadliest wildfire in state history. It could take weeks to contain the deadly fires and more than 6,000 structures have been burned. President Trump has approved an expedited request to declare a major disaster in the state of California. The shelter house in Iowa City has received a temporary permit to allow more people to stay overnight in their lobby. This permit allows people to people to serve this. Sorry, this. Sorry, excuse us. This shelter is provided to serve more than 30 people, raising its total capacity to 100. The lobby space will not only be open when temperatures.
The lobby space will be open to allow when temperatures are below freezing. The location is open at 821 South Clinton Street. Last year, on average, the shelter served a low, a low of 25 people per night. The shelter plans to be open on December 3rd. Well, Anthony, that shelter might need to open a little early. It's still November, and we've got some pretty cold temperatures here in Iowa City. You're right, Beck. I don't think anyone around Iowa City is enjoying these cold temperatures. Let's see what this weather has in store for us this week. Let's throw it over to Samantha Oswick in the weather studio to tell us more. Samantha? Yeah, guys, I can tell you I was a little shocked when I walked outside this morning and felt the temperature. Today, it's only reaching a high of 28 degrees with sunny skies all day and later dropping down to a low of 19 degrees in the evening. Looking at the rest of the week, our temperatures will rise as Wednesday will have a high of 40 degrees with nothing but clear skies and later reaching a low of 23 degrees. Thursday, we will see the sun again with a high in the low 40s and a low in the high 20s. Friday, we will start to warm up with temperatures reaching the mid 40s and a low in the high 20s. But as the weekend comes, our temperatures plunge down into the low 30s with some slight clouds Saturday and staying in the low 30s. Well, that's all I have in the weather studio. Stay warm, Iowa City, and guys, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Samantha. You may be sick of all the construction in Iowa City, but city officials are saying the outcomes will be worth the wait. One area of construction raising concern is the intersection of Myrtle Avenue and Riverside Drive, a popular area for off-campus living. Residents are concerned about the narrow pathway left for pedestrians to cross, while construction on the Riverside continues. Other projects such as the Gateway Project on Dubuque Street is wrapping up as well. A project that resulted from the 2008 floods and the need to rise the street level to, re to reduce the flood damage. For more, you can check out DailyIowan.com. Earlier, you heard from Samantha Oswick in the Weather Studio, but Samantha also went out to find more about how two University of Iowa alums are making moves in the tech world. Samantha takes us through the app to give us a sneak peek. A new app called Speako Public Speaking Coach was created by two University of Iowa alum. The app is designed to help students and employees better their verbal communication skills, whether it be for class speeches or presentations. The app listens to recordings of users' voices and uses analytics to break down each individual's verbal patterns and what linguistic and phonetic techniques can be approved upon when speaking. The app has different lessons to time, speech, and pace. The app gives tips and lessons on different speech techniques. You should adjust your speaking rate depending on your speech content as well as the needs of your audience. This is your pace. The target pace range is from 100 to 160 words per minute, or WPM. University of Iowa alum Nico Aguilar and Anthony Fahm's app Speako has been selected in the top 10 out of 2,000 applicants to work with an entrepreneurial network called Techstar to accelerate success. Speako was recognized for its large range of tools on the app to help speakers and its ability to provide easy voice recording exercises. The app is free for download on Apple and Android devices. For DITV News, I'm Samantha Ostwick. Well, Anthony, uh, Hawkeye football is having a bit of a rough season as we near the end here, but at least now we've got Iowa basketball to cheer on. You're right, Beckett. It never seems like it's slowing down in the world of Hawkeye sports. Let's toss it over to Natalie in the sports studio to tell us more. Natalie? Thanks, guys. That's right. Especially with this cold weather going on, I'm excited to go into more of the indoor sports. Well, college basketball is finally back, and Iowa basketball has their biggest challenge of the season coming up this week in their 2K Classic. With more, we have DITV sports director and men's basketball beat reporter Lucy Rodine standing live, standing by live in the newsroom. Good morning, Lucy. How are you? Good morning, Natalie. I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> so good. So, Lucy, how can you, what can you tell us about Iowa's upcoming tournament? So this week, Iowa will travel to New York City to play in the 2K Empire Classic. The headlining teams in this classic are Iowa, Syracuse, UConn, and Oregon, who Iowa will face on Thursday. The opening rounds for this game were this past weekend where Iowa took on Missouri, Kansas City and Green Bay. Iowa will be playing in Madison Square Garden and it's the first time Iowa's played in this tournament since 2014. Well, that's really interesting since they haven't played there yet, but it should be good. But are there any injury updates heading into this 2K Classic? Yes, I know it's only two games into the season, but Iowa's already had a couple injuries. Jordan Bohannon is officially at 100% after receiving a bruised bone in practice a few weeks ago. He started against Missouri, Kansas City, and Green Bay and is looking really good. But unfortunately, Cordell Penzel landed awkwardly in practice last week and did not play against Green Bay. And Iowa is really going to need Cordell because Oregon is a very tall and physical team. 
Iowa's going to need all the height they can get and all the help they need off the bench. So they're really going to need Cordell to be able to play and strong bench performances from him, Ryan Creener and Nicholas Bear if they have any shot at beating the Ducks on Thursday. Well, Lucy, I completely agree with you on that. But Lucy Redeen live in the newsroom. Thanks so much. The Hawks will be taking on the ranked Oregon Ducks Thursday night in Madison Square Garden. And one Hawkeye basketball player will travel from New York City to St. Louis to be recognized for his tribute to a former player on the court. DITV sports reporter D Taylor Van Fleet reports. Last season, Iowa guard Jordan Bohannon intentionally missed a free throw that would have broken a record held by the late Chris Street, who was killed in a car accident back in 1993. Street and Bohannon now share the Iowa men's basketball record for consecutive made free throws. That missed free throw is receiving national recognition as Bohannon will travel to St. Louis this week to receive the Musial Award, something that his head coach, Fran McCaffrey, is very proud of. That organization takes that award very seriously, and, and a lot went into who they picked. You know, so I'm, I'm really proud of Jordan. Uh, I'm really proud that they picked someone from our program. Named after baseball Hall of Famer Stan Musial, the Musial Award honors the year's greatest moments of sportsmanship and the biggest names in sports who embody class and character. It's pretty surreal to be able to accept this prestigious award and um, the, the people that were nominated is, is quite the list. Bohannon is among a special group of people to be honored at this year's awards. And Coach McCaffrey believes his name belongs on that list for what he did for the legacy of Chris Street. It sort of keeps Chris Street's story alive, and, and you know, maybe some people that didn't know about it will now know about it because of what Jordan did. Reporting from Carver Hawkeye Arena, this has been Taylor Van Fleet for DI TV Sports. We apologize for technical difficulties, but that is truly awesome how he, as a player, did that for um, their team and program. But Jordan Bohannon wasn't the only Hawkeye to earn an honor this week. On Monday, the big 10 front office announced that Megan Gustafson was the Big Ten Player of the Week. In Iowa's season opener against Oral Roberts, Gustafson led the team in points, rebounds, assists, and blocks. Megan shot 61% from the field and finished the night with, a 20, with 23 points and 17 rebounds. Gustafson, Gustafson and the rest of the women's basketball team will be back in action tonight for their first true road test of the season at Western Kentucky. But that's it for me in the sports studio today. But come back tomorrow for a special look at one women's basketball player's return on the court this season. Becca and Anthony, back to you. The superhero Marvel Comics has died. Yesterday, Stan Lee, a writer, editor, and publisher of Marvel Comics, passed away at the age of 95. Lee began his career in 1939 when he helped co-create Black Panther, Spider-Man, and Iron Man amongst many other lovable superheroes. In 2009, Marvel partnered with the Walt Disney Company to bring Lee's characters to life in various feature films in which he made many cameos. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is one of the latest in Lee's stories to hit the big screen and is due out in theaters next month. And thank you for tuning in to this Tuesday morning edition of DITV. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook for all your latest updates. And don't forget to pick up the print edition of The Daily Iowan or check out our website, dailyiowan.com, if you're on the run. For DITV, I'm Becca Scadden. And I'm Anthony Calagiri. Have a great day, Iowa City, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow. Same time, same place.